afternoon and welcome to Understanding Payments and Deposits. This is a popular topic, Chuck. It is a popular topic. Again, for some reason, everybody's interested in the money, notwithstanding, of course, as we get into tax season, April 15th is coming along. But um, um, again, um, Student Manager and Aceware have a, first of all, welcome, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Student Manager and AceWeb have a number of elements that help you track the money. And so we're going to kind of break those down, looking at the fee, the payments, and some of the f deposits, you know, tracking that money coming in. So what we'll do, we're going to take a minute and look at that, where it all begins. Of course, fees start with the course. Uh, we'll go through the payment side of things. Uh, we'll talk about group payments. Um, hopefully, you're doing some things with groups uh, for group registration. Payment plans, uh, for those of you that allow invoicing, uh, of course, manager allows the payment plan option. Um, invoicing, a real brief hit on invoicing because we do have a webinar that I think is pretty thorough on that that we'll reference. Um, and then, obviously, if everybody were perfect the first time out, we wouldn't need this, but cancels, transfers, refunds, and dealing with escrow. We'll kind of cover that. And then, of course, the oops factor. What if we screwed up? You screwed up. The student screwed up. How can we get that to, to, to come out right? And then, finally, payments and deposit reports. So I believe that's what will cover us this afternoon. Uh, to kind of wake everybody up, Lori, I'm going to have you do a poll. I just want to kind of see who all is attending here, and if you would, um, tell us whether or not you, uh, where, where you are in the, in the organizational structure there at your program. So, Lori, take it away. So, are you a business finance or accounting specialist? And we gave you two answers for yes. Yes, that's all okay. I do, and yes, but I have other things to do as well. Okay. No, but you're just here because you're interested. Um, on the registration team, will want to know about payments, and it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I like the it's media. complicated. That may, that may cover a lot of options. Anyway, this is kind of uh, Lori keeping me honest. That uh, I want to find out how many uh, bona fide uh, business people we've got or whether we've got a lot that are kind of like me, that you do a little bit of everything, and you try to understand enough about the finances to make sure that you're going in the right direction and depend on you know people like my daughter the CPA to keep us square so anyway take a minute respond to that and uh, Lori will give a we're gonna make make this quick again we've got a lot of ground to cover so we wanna just get a quick idea of who else is on here and the answer is let's go ahead and we'll share give it a shot then let's see what the results three percent like. say yes but they have other responsibilities okay and actually okay. almost 20 percent be... said it's complicated <laughs> <laughs> okay i can see that i can see that well all right well thanks guys for for fessing up and i'll try to uh, keep up with the uh, the real bean counters out there so payments start with fees and again in Aceware and student manager, before you can make a payment, you have to have a fee, and that comes from the course. So again, it's when you set up the class uh, that you have the charges that you're going to have. Now, tuition fees, fairly clean. Optional additional fees, when you go to start collecting payments, you can be mandatory or they can be optional. You can actually have a coupon, which would be a negative. And we'll talk about that at the registration level. But generally, this is where you start. Now, uh, if we're talking about payments and the word deposits, one of the other angle of a deposit is that when you come to doing a deposit for a program, and again, if you have high dollar programs, maybe there are trips and tours, several thousand dollars, maybe there are uh, high end training programs, that might be announced months and months in advance uh, that you might want to allow a student to make a deposit for that course and pay the balance later. And again, I want you to remember there is a deposit option that you can let people on the web register in advance and only pay part of a deposit rather than the whole thing. And I'm going to reference that via the 
help guide. So this is the manager help guide. If you go in and type deposit in the search mode, you're going to get to the ACE web course uh, reference. And you can read all about how you can set up a course deposit so that when a person registers online, uh, it basically allows them to pay only the deposit. It gives them a seat in the class and it automatically creates a billing record for the balance due. And we'll actually circle back to that in a bit. So uh, this is, again, as part of the course setup, one of the options that, again, will affect how your payments come in. Again, for newbies or oldies here, as always, if you have a question, write it in the text box. I'll take a breather from time to time, let Lori pop any that are relevant at the minute, Otherwise, we'll circle back and catch them at the end. So, Lori, so so far, so good. So good so far. So good so far. All right. Uh, on the registration screen. Okay. So we've now got the course set up. We're in the spot where we're doing the registration screen. Um, kind of, if you stand back, and again, those of you who have used Manager know that the green screen is the registration screen, where we have and I'm going to go ahead and tab over to eh, the name record here, where you have the student that's registering, the course that's involved, and it's where you set the fees that they are due. How much do they owe? So this represents the charges, the bill, minus any discounts or adjustments. So that is the key part on that. And the whole point of this slide up to this point is that make sure that this total due here is what you want. So whatever the fee is of the early bird, do they have a group fee? You try to get that right. Add on any other supplemental items in here. Um, add on fees, put in the discounts, returning camper discount, so that before you go to payments, this dollar amount is the way you want. Now, obviously, we'll talk about how you can edit it, but obviously trying to get it right the first time is the preferable approach. Um, what are some of the other options now when you're at the registration screen? And again, let's talk about from whence do fees and payments come. You have to have a course. Then you have a registration in the course where the fees are actually referenced and tied into the person who's going to pay or the, the student in that class. So what are some other elements about a registration that can affect payment information? One little note, and I'm not sure how many people use it, it's what's called the paid by field. And basically what the paid by field allows you to do, and let me get back to the show here. The paid by field, let me, let me roll to manager is there is a field on the upper right that will store who is the paying for this registration? Um, and if you hover over it, it says person, firm, or other party. We automatically fill that in based on who the payer name is on the record. So if we go in real quickly, make a payment, I'm going to make this by, cat, by check, and we're going to leave the payer as Charles Havlicek. That's going to put a P there because the payer name happens to match the student name. If the payer name was the firm, now, now again, as a user, you can change this. Uh, but if the payer name was ASWR Systems, then it would have checked against the firm of Chuck Havlicek, which is ASWR Systems, and it would have put in there F for firm. If it was a third party payer, the name doesn't match either the name of the student or the name of the firm, it would use O for other. So again, that is useful for you if you're trying to do some analysis in terms of who is paying for the registrations for the people that take your courses. So again, that's the, um, that is the paid by field. Billing only registration, and that is used primarily when you do contract programs or um, agency paid perhaps, I'm going to, Lori, if I can get to my panel here, uh, get Ace Web up, get to my tools. Come on, hang on a sec, guys. 
Here we go. Uh, I'm going to have you raise your hand if you have used billing only registrations for contract programs. And I'm going to roll, if I can, multitask here too. Um, and again, so the idea would be if you use this billing record option right here. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I see I, yeah, quite a few. Good, good. And again, the whole idea of the billing record is that it allows you to put in a registration record so you can tie a billing, like an invoice and a payment to it, to an individual who would not actually be attending the class or the contract training that you're working on. And again, there is a, um, there is a pretty good section in the help guide about the billing only record element. So uh, that is the billing only. Uh, adding on the fly adjustments. Again, if we roll to the registration, this is what we're talking about right here, fee adjustment description. So if you had to add an, a miscellaneous charge, if you needed to make an adjustment, add a credit, add a check fee, uh, you can add that on the fly to the registration. So if we add a $5 additional charge just for giggles and grins, you can add that on the fly. Now, the one thing, most of the time you would presumably want to have a kind of standard descriptor of why you're making an adjustment or an additional charge. Um, but if there was a reason you wanted to make an adjustment and it's kind of a one-time thing. Uh, it's because the guy got hit by a meteor. Okay, doesn't happen all that often. You don't want to put it in a drop-down. But you want to make a note of it. So the option there, if you look over there, Alt and the number 4 will open that field. So now I can type whatever I want. Whatever I want to describe. Again, plus or minus. Plus or plus or minus, and I can put in minus seven dollars and fifty cents. And again, that will be written to the database. It'll be written to the record. Uh, but again, it's not going to be stored. I think Alt Four flips me back again. It's not going to be saved in the list. So again, that's that's one of the options in the. Uh, all for which witchy, whatever you want to call it. Grouping registrations. Whoa, we'll go back to that. Grouping registrations together. Um, again, I'm going to do a quick show of hands. How many of you do grouping of any of these when you're doing managers grouping? Uh, there's oh, we've got definitely Cody. Uh, okay, got him in. Yeah, a lot. And again. The idea here, the easy and simple thing is one person, multiple courses. You know, Delma wants to take four different classes. You put her name in there once, or you put her, uh, you get to her name record. Let me roll back, roll back to the name. You get to her name record, and we start adding, we start adding registrations. And um, again, you can then check out and pay for all of the registrations in that order in one time. And again, if you, if you as a ACEWARE user have cases where one student takes multiple courses or one company might send multiple people to a class or multiple classes and they say, I'd like to pay for this in one check or one credit card payment, that is what grouping allows you to do. I'm not going to beat on it right now. It is in the help guide. Um, and again, if you think you could use it and you're not sure how to do that, call your tech, check your help guide. Um, again, it is a pretty darn handy tool. And we're going to tell you how the payments work on that in a minute. Okay, multiple options to group. Lori, any frantic questions now that I need to cover so we keep people together? Oh, the crowd is pretty quiet. Okay. All right. It is in the middle of the afternoon, and like I said, the other day we de we declared up here in in Kansas a nice weather emergency afternoon, and it, it's shaping up today or tomorrow might get one of those too. So, don't want to make everybody else jealous. But okay, so we talked about the registration where the fees are established. 
Now let's talk about what we really want to do, make the payments, take the payments. Um, when you are making a payment, I, it's pretty basic. You have the payment amount when you add a new payment is defaulted to the total amount that is due. So again, whatever the, whatever the total amount that is due would, uh, would appear up here. And then, of course, you as a user would have a chance to put in how much is paid. So um, again, the default when you do add for a new payment is that it fills in the total amount due. You can change that. Uh, hopefully, you know that. Um, who's paying for it? Again, the default on a payment is that if the student is registering, I think it's by default it is the, the student name, but if the payment is being made by the firm, you can just click paid by firm, it will change a payer name, or even if it's a third party, you can go to find firm, find name, and it will look up anybody in any one of those databases, and of course with the one we don't have on here, but which is which is also the case, you can just type in a new name. You can just type in a new name as to who's paying for this. Again, um, if it's not necessarily in your database, but you just need to make the record of it. That's entirely within how we'll be able to set up to handle that. So the idea of who is paying, um, let's see. Honorable mention fields, and again, uh, the devil in the details. And I think, oh, that where that trident come from? In additional notes, in additional notes, if there is a reason that you want to put in some special notes, uh, we've got like a hundred and some characters of notes to put in here. This idea, these three transaction ID and ACE Web session ID, those are reserved for ACE Web activities. Uh, and for, if you would, I guess, when you're making payments by credit card, the transaction ID that is tied to your payment gateway, whether it's TouchNet, PayPal, Authorize.net, that ID number, kind of a serial number of the payment via credit card goes in there. And that's a way you can track your payments through your whatever payment gateway you deal with. Um, Another tool, and again, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask this. Uh, I, I like asking those hands. Keep your hands ready, guys. How many of you are using the clone pay detail option, where you can actually clone the payment from the last payment you made uh, into the current one here? So raise your hands if you're doing that. Clone pay. I don't. A uh, few folks, but again. I'm not sure again how often that would be. I guess if you're really doing cloning pay, you probably should be grouping the registration so that you're making one payment for all of them. But every once in a while, that clone bay detail is handy. And again, the way that works is that whenever you save information on a payment, that payment detail is saved to this clone pay clipboard, if you will, and you can use it in a new payment screen. I suppose even theoretically, if you had recorded a payer name on a couple of payments, and then the payer says, oh, wait a minute, uh, it's not Grandpa Chuck that's paying for this, it's Grandmother Chuck, who, Chuck who's paying for it. And so you want to change that name and the address and the email and all, the clone pay detail would let you do that. And I'll kind of reference on that. Um, so if you've made a payment, um, and we go into a payment on a record here. Right now, I haven't made a payment bit of detail. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a payment amount of a dollar. We're going to pick on Cody here, cash, Cody Brewington. I'm going to make a firm be the payer on that, Cody. Give you a break. Okay, so we save that. Now, if we were to go to make another payment, now I'm, out, I'm in Cody's same record here. But if we go in to make another payment, and if you hover over the pay detail, you'll note when I hover over the pay detail, it will give you a little pop-up that says, what was the clone, the last clone? So you can tell, if you click paste right now, what, 
the payer name would be that would paste into this. So again, that clone pay detail, that can be a handy, handy kind of tool. Lori, how are we doing? Anything striking, immediate, urgent? I think there are several people here having small epiphanies. I think that's what's going on here. An epiphany. All right, we'll take a we'll take a February epiphany whenever we can. Uh, don't get tripped up. And again, this is both on payments and registrations. Is that if you are making additional payments on a previous payment, obviously you want to click Add first. Uh, you don't want to try to start editing the current payment. Now, we kind of cover you on this because. There are some rules of the road we set up on payments. Number one, you cannot edit a pay amount or a receipt number once you've saved the payment and a receipt number is assigned. Two, you can edit the pay date, the date the payment is logged in. And again, if you've got a case where, and let me get back to manager, if we've got a case here where uh, we're putting in registrations for Mr. Cody here. And today's the 17th, but that the payment for that registration actually came in last Friday. And we just got around to pulling the check out of the cash box that was sitting underneath the glove compartment of the car, the state car that we had. So we want to make sure when we're adding a payment now, that was a check Mr. Cody gave us, check number 123 that we can go in and put in this ad date here, 02, what was last Friday? 012, wasn't it? No, 13. No, 112. You're right, 12. 12 was last Friday. So we hit that save so that we actually, uh, as a user, you can go ahead and, and put in the date that, that that payment actually was received. So that is uh, an option for you. Reset billing and add a payment plan. Now we're going to talk about that. If you are a group that does allow students to bill via the web and you do have programs where they might be high dollar and you want to be able to let them have a payment plan, there's a way to do that. We're going to cover that. Stay tuned. Payment types. Nine user-defined pay types. And this is when we're at the when we're at the pay type field here, you'll see check, you'll see cash check, billing, and then you see the other A, B, C, D. Well, the other seven and A, B, C, D, E, F, H, those are payment types that you can uh, define as user-defined pay types in your own particular circumstance. Uh, default date on the billing date, again, in the preferences, and let me see if I can real quickly run to preferences here. Under pay preferences, this is preferences pay. Uh, these are those user-defined pay types we talked about. This is the spot where you can define the default billing date. That is, whenever you do a billing, what is the day you want to put as the default day on the date that payment is going to be recorded? Today, the begin date, the end date, a specific date, or some custom date that you can build, and this would be your tech or Matthew would need to help you build kind of a formula, if you would, that you can use a specific um, calculated date for the day the billing um, by default would be stamped. All right, so hopefully we still got more epiphanies coming. Um, again, reminder about the pay note fields and the user-defined fields. Now I'm going to note here, we'll come back to user-defined. Tab behavior takes you where you need to go. And this is one I'm really not. People have accused me of being a Luddite and, and not being interested in using the mouse. Ah, heck, I used a mouse once. Come on, knock off. All right, so if we're in a registration and we go to payments, um, right now and again, when you land on the payment, we try to keep you um, clear here. We're adding a payment. By default, no payment type is, type is defined. It defaults to void. Um, and again, you, uh, you, if you try to save a void, it says you can't do that. Pick a payment type. Okay. Now, um, if we needed to change a payment type, we could. We're not. We're going to tab. Now we're in the payment type. The idea of the letter type is that if I type D for discover, it'll automatically pop in D for discover. 
if I were to type V for visa, uh, let's try VI. VI, v, uh, I'll get visa. CH for check. C, slowly, cash. M, MasterCard. O, I get one of the other values. And so the idea is that you can keep your fingers on the keyboard and then you tab across off number. If it was a payment type and you're doing credit cards, your validate would be live and you're, you're in business. So again, that idea of tabbing and typing the first couple of letters of the item here will automatically pop it into the screen. Here are those user-defined fields. And again, a two-character, um, I think this is a number and I think this is a date. Uh, no, this is a logical and this is a date. So if you need to track other bits of information about a payment, you can do that. Again, other information, pay note, um, are fields that are available to you here. Hmm, try and think. Lori, anything else about the pay record that we have not beat on? I'm looking and I don't see anything. Okay, and again, we'll talk financial aid, escrow pay. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit of this later. Financial aid, there actually is a webinar on the financial aid module. So again, we won't, we're not going to really hit that uh, in today's session. So, all right, back to the rules of the road. All right, next, managing payments for groups. So, group registrations, and again, when you have a group of registrations, what you're able to do is apply a single payment, and it'll pick up everybody who's in the group. And let's, let's get to, again, a live example here. Uh, I want to, no, I want to abandon this. Yes, I'm going to undo, abandon, abandon. Okay, let's get out of this. So, we're going to look up um, a group. We're going to look up Chuck here, Havlicek, and I've built this group. So when I go to edit registration, uh, when you're doing a group, there's a couple things that are fairly obvious. It's a group. Number one, you have the group total due, group total paid, balance due. That column is displayed on the screen. The checkbox at the top that says group is checked. And if you look at show group, it'll tell you, well, how many people are in this group? Think of it as a party at a table at a restaurant. So there are four of us here that are in this particular group. Now, all of the charges for that group are totaled up here. If I am ready to make a payment for this group, and again, I did these groups earlier, but if you're doing a payment on a group, you probably have made the group and you're setting at one of the people in the group and you're ready to make the payment. Um, so again, um, if I'm at Charles Havlicek and he's the payer, I think it'll default. Whoever is you're setting on when you go to make a payment is going to be the payer name defaulted on the payment type. So I go to payments. It tells me the total group amount that I owe. <coughs> so here's my registration, <coughs> but here's the group. Uh, the tab for the entire table of the four of us that we're wanting to pay. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm paying for it with a Visa card, <clears throat> as noted, because I went into that registration or that payment from the Chuck Havlicek registration. It referenced my name as the payer. Now, if you said, oh, shoot, I was... There's Ron Davis and there's Cheryl Scott and somebody else in this group. That's the one who's really picking up the tab. You can go over to the name, find Mr. Davis, and put in Ron Davis's name here. Or, of course, if it's the firm, <coughs> pardon me, you'd put in the payer name there. <coughs> so that is applying a payment for everybody in this group. All I have to do is enter the payment message, the detail once, hit save, and we're in the system. <coughs> Sorry about that. Lori, is that horrible bad? <clears throat> I try to cover my... Oh, you're piece. just fine. I feel bad for you, though, that you're choking. You've got February crud. <clears throat> well, it was bad. I was also eating a piece of popcorn before the webinar, which was... <coughs> <laughs> a bad idea. All right. 
so when that does that, now it shows that for each individual payment, we have a payment record, and then we also can show the group of who it is that we paid for. Okay, so that's one scenario. <clears throat> the next one would be if we had a partial payment. If you have a group of registrations, <clears throat> it's owed X amount, and you're not paying the whole amount, you'll have an option to distribute. And this is where it gets to be fun. <clears throat> you can do multiple ways to do that. Proportional, which means you would apply a percentage of each payment to each registration. Equally, where it takes the total, it applies an equal amount to each registration specify, <clears throat> which you actually can uh, manually assign X number of dollars to registration one, two, three, four, and then current registration, which applies the full amount to the current registration. Um, and again, obviously, if the registration is less than the amount <clears throat> that is due, it, it pays it off and then asks you what you want to do with the next. So let's go through an example of this specify. Um, I'm going to find another group, and that would be for a Mr. Smith. M-I-T-H. Here's Bill Smith. We're going to go to Joe Smith. Get his edit registration. And here is Mr. Joseph Smith. He's a member of the Smith group. <clears throat> All right. And total due, this happens to be three people, same course, 125 each. But if we're going into payments and we say, well, we only have $300 to pay, and that's the max on my credit card, we go to make the payment, save, we're going to do this. Now, it says, how do we want to do this? Now, where there's an even dollar amount, and I'm going to talk about this a bit more later, and <clears throat> this is a case, if you've got people using the course packaging with courses that have varying, wildly varying fee amounts in terms of their charges. If you do proportional, you come up with the most bizarre kind of percentages. It'll do the percentages perfectly, but you'll end up with a $100 course with $33.33 and the $300 course with $100, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so, um, now, in this case, with a equal amounts of pay per course or the fee per course, proportional would be probably fine. Um, and again, equally would then take uh, the, the, the fees and uh, make an equal amount across all the payments. I'm going to point to specs because these two are automatic. Proportional, equally, it'll just do it automatically. Specify. So. What that'll show is here are the three people, the three dollar amounts, and then we're going to indicate how much we want to pay for each one. Well, maybe if I wanted to say, well, Bill and Joseph are, are, are I want to pay the full amount on them. So I'm going to do 125, and I'm going to do 125, and that leaves us, and you'll note at the top, we have this little cool, do, cool deal it'll actually give you a remainder. Here's how much left you have to apply. And you'll also note the apply option is not even lit up until I get the right amount. So if I were to put in here $125, not paying any attention, it, I, it, whoop, it says, hey, wait a minute, there's a negative $75 here. I'm overpaying, and the apply will not even work. So again, until we get this to where we have an even Steven, okay, now our remainder is zero. Now it will let us apply that amount. I'm actually going to stop right here and ask if anybody, I love this hand business, raise your hand if you have gone in and done this apply option before. Hey, we've got a couple. Bingo. Annie, very good. Uh, B Burks, very good. I'm trying to think. Not a whole lot of others. Jeanette, okay. Um, but yeah, that is a way. And again, where you've got, and I think kind of get back to the routine, um, 
and let's we talk about in general, I'm going to circle back. A single payment will result in the individual payment each member. They share the same receipt number, so you're able to actually track that receipt through the audit trail. Here's what I was going to say about groups. If you anticipate, and the big deal on this, if you anticipate multiple payments on a group, uh, where you're making partial payments a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit there, I would highly, and again, technical schools that have grants, if you've got partial scholarships, you might have three or four agencies or entities paying for a person's registration. <clears throat> I would highly recommend using this specify option where you pay off a reg at a time, and that way you don't have these percentages, penny, penny here, penny there, of fractional payments. Lori, how confused do we have people now? You're doing a good job. I, I don't have a lot of costs. Just all right. Well, well, well I just want to make sure there's nobody there threatening to go off the deep end on us here. So, all right. Um, moving along. And again, let's talk about course packaging. Course packaging is an optional module. I think a number of you are getting that. If you don't have it and you have a need to, if you have cases where you'd like to bundle courses or you have technical programs where, like a CNA program might have five or six courses as part of the program, course packaging is the best thing since like spread. Now, if you do have packaging and you do have courses where you anticipate multiple payments, I would highly recommend using the package one type versus the package type two. And again, that lets you have one place where all fees are referenced. Um, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll argue long and hard in favor of that, having been at a couple places where they don't do that, and then they have to split payments across five different payers, across seven different courses, and you split up a penny here and a penny there. Um, it, 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 it drives my poor gray hair bald is what it does. So, All right, uh, payment plans. Payment plans. We're, we're moving off of group payments into billings and payment plans. Well, when you make a billing, or when, you, when you create a billing record, you have an option to go over here and say, make a payment plan. When you do that, it'll ask you how many installments you want to create. That can be from 2 to 20, 30, as many as you want. When you continue then, after you do the installment, you, you pick the number of installments, you hit OK, it'll then give you a table. Shows you the billing date, the start date is today, and then every 30 days it makes a different entry and it divides up the payments again equally for each one. <clears throat> uh, and then once you say OK, it will go ahead and create three different billings with these dates so that they'll come up in the future. Now note, just like we did a minute ago on that apply payment, you may edit the days and the amounts to make them even or on a clear schedule. If you want it to be 215, 315, 415, or 216, you know, 401, 501, you're able to edit those. And you can edit the dollar amounts. So if you wanted to make it 260, 270, and then 250 or whatever, so that you have, you know, even dollar amounts rather than the, uh, you know, the division here. Um, you're able to do that, and again, it will monitor your math so that you can't make the bills less than or more than the total amount that uh, that the course is owed. So, um, billing plans on that. Uh, it will create a separate billing for each installment. Now, a couple of notes about the billing plan on the web. On ACE Web, you, you all know that you can allow students to make a billing online if you choose, and if you set the course up to do that. However, on the web, a student cannot make a billing plan. Billing plan. So what you need to do, if you've got a um, billing plan option, what you would probably do is put a note in the course description that if you'd like to build this class, if you'd like to pay for this class on a payment plan, please contact the office. And then when that registration comes in, 
uh, they could they could say register now, bill me. But what the staff would do would be to go in to the payment, void or delete the original web billing, and then add a new billing pay type and pick billing plan. I guess the point is, once you have created a billing record, and let me get out of this, and we're on Joe Smith. I'm going to go ahead and add a registration. No, we don't want to group it. One registration, make a payment, make a billing, save this, and go back, payment. Now, once you've made a billing, you can't just retroactively make it a billing plan. But um, again, until you create an invoice for that, you as a staff member can go ahead and either void or delete the billing, because at this point there's no invoice number on it. Payment type, yes, we want to do that. I'm going to make this a void. Yes, we want to say that. Reason for voiding, make a billing plan, and we save that. So now when we go in and we're going to add a new payment, we can make it a billing, and now on a new billing setup, you have the option to be able to set up the payment plan, three installments, and again, rather than 63, 63, 63, maybe we might want to say $80, $80, and now we've got to do the math here, $40, and if we say OK there, it'll say, you have entered an amount different than what was totally billed. Do you want to continue? Uh, nope. Let's go ahead and correct that. 45 ought to be correct. Boom, and it gives me the the course loads loads that in. So that puts in an eighty dollar payment, um, and then the other the other payments in this amount. Well, this one through a his. Oh, there they are. Eighty dollars, forty five dollars, and eighty dollars. So it made those it made those three payments or the three billings for that particular record. And this was the one that was voided. You see, the eight is is a void. All right. Um, Lori, questions? We good? Or anything you want to beat on right now? All right. No, I think we're pretty good. Going to going to invoicing. I think we'll have a couple of minutes. We're we're doing pretty good here. Invoicing. Now again, um, when we're doing an invoice, we've kind of gone through a couple of this before. But when you create a billing record, whether that comes in via the web or comes in, you as staff are doing this through Student Manager. You would make the type billing. And it says uninvoiced bill, save that, and you've got the registration, you've got the billing. Now, making a billing into an invoice. Now, a billing is not an invoice unless it has an invoice number. So again, in this case, this was our voided one. Now, we have not made a bill for this yet because those are basically future payments here. Here's a billing record. We don't have an invoice number assigned to that. Uh, the place where you do that is that when you go tools, invoices, run invoices, print new invoices, there are some options of about how you might want to do that. Uh, run the default report. So it, what it will do, it will group uh, billings based on the name on the bill to. So Joseph Smith has one, Kansas State has one, St. Joseph one, USA one, Alabama Huntsville. There were no registrations with billings that had multiple registrations to the same paying entity, so they all have basically just one name per one name per registration or one name per invoice. Um, and then it will assign those invoice numbers now so that um, you can then go in to invoices, outstanding invoices, and you'll see these invoices in the system um, as an outstanding invoice that you can then apply a payment to. Undo the changes, and we'll get back out of that. So that is the aspect of a billing is that, well, let's look up Smith and show you Smith, Joseph. Edit registration, go to the payment. Got to go over to the invoice that we assigned. So this now is a billing that has been invoiced. So that's the distinction between a billing and an invoice. 
a billing is a is a bill that is to a particular person which has not been invoiced in other words that typically it doesn't have an invoice number which normally is that you haven't sent the bill to that individual yet because you wouldn't generally send them a bill until you assign an invoice number to it <clears throat> uh, as a way to keep you uh, keep you tracking straight on that now um, applying a payment to an invoice um, when you go to make a payment on an invoice and again for those of you I'm gonna I'm into asking questions uh, okay guys fingers ready pay attention raise your hand if you are using the company invoicing option that I'm kinda going through here in other words, and again, most anybody running a system that's less than uh, eight years old will have that. Boy, a lot of not a lot of you are doing it. And again, maybe you don't do much in the way of billing and invoicing. But if you do billings, uh, this certainly can help you out on that. So, all right, let's go back and get kind of finished up. Run invoices, print new invoices. Um, there's a couple of options that you can have when you can actually assign an invoice number right at the time of billing. Um, <clears throat> and again, that you can, um, um, there is an option in the, the preferences. Uh, let's get back to it. There is an option in preferences that says, payments that says assign invoice number at billing screen. Uh, and what that will let you do is the minute you assign a billing record, it asks, do you want to assign an invoice number to that billing screen? Again, <clears throat> there are reasons why you may or may not want to do this. Uh, so again, just know that there are some options available to you if you're doing billing and you're doing the invoicing system as to how you might want to manage that. And I'm, I'm not going to try to get into all the scenarios at this point. Uh, I think we're getting good on the time. Here is something that is new that I wanted to highlight, and this is literally in the last couple of months. And the issue here is that if you were, if you made an invoice for somebody, and then you just got done making the invoice, and whether you did it a sign at the time of billing, or whether you did the mass invoice and it generated it, and then you you figure out, oh bull hockey or sugarfoot or whatever that is wrong the amount of the charge is not correct and you have an invoice number on it but you haven't sent it out yet okay so what you can do thanks to Matthew is use the invigorate invoice I already come up with that name I'm not quite sure <clears throat> so let's look up mr. Boyd here Michael Boyd and we're gonna look at his registration we look at his payment and it says his payment amount for the billing that's been that we build an invoice on is 250 but he only owes 215 so we look at this and we say oh he registered and actually was charged the regular registration fee of 250 when he should have been given the discounted fee of 215 so hmm what do we do on this well what the reinvigorate invoice allows you to do is voids this billing, but it creates a new one. Wrong amount. You know, what's a re we even give you a default reason, you know, and this was Chuck screwed up. Chuck screwed up. You got to put that UP closer there. Invoice amount 215. And now it basically it voided the old one, so you actually do have you have a record of that original invoice. So if you're if for some reason there's some question about why that number exists voided in one reel, <clears throat> you actually are able to go back and um, show somebody, show your auditor where that is. But again, an invoice isn't money. An invoice is saying, Mr. Boyd, you owe us that amount, and what you're wanting to do, obviously. It is not bill people for inappropriate amounts. They tend to get a little bit hacked about that. All right, let's see. I think we're about ready. When an invoice is too bad to fix, I love the you know fear, fear and loathing and and the horror. You know, there is a tool, and again, you have to have a certain level of access to get to it. <clears throat> but within Manager, 
where you can go in and void an invoice, uh, void a receipt or invoice. Now again, you have to have a fairly high level, if not administrator access in your student manager security level to do this, but this allows you to, uh, if there was an invoice, maybe you sent 50 invoices out to a company um, on, on 50 different people and the whole thing blew up and you need to start all over again. Uh, that will allow you allow you to do that. Okay, uh, webinar archiving again. There is a webinar called You've Earned It, Let's Bill It. So if you want more info on invoicing, there you go. And again, the assigned payment to invoice, uh, we even have an option that if you are making a payment before the invoice is generated and you do invoice numbers, you can hit apply payment to invoice down here. It'll pop up a screen that says, would you like to assign an invoice number? Answer yes. And it will then make the payment and assign the invoice number to it. And you're happy, happy. And before we leave that, uh, and uh, again, getting into the Smith here, I think it was Joseph Smith, SMIT, Joseph, oh, he has made the payment. So, uh, no, up, 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 edit registration, payment, uh, we want to add a payment, um, and up, up, up. let me, let me undo this, I'm getting out of here. Um, <clears throat> when you are when you are making a payment, one of the things that you're looking at is that <clears throat> when you apply apply a payment to a invoice, it references the pay to invoice. So here's an invoice, 80 bucks for Joseph Smith. So when we go over to the particular payment, 80 bucks, and here's our invoice number, we want to apply the payment to the invoice, <clears throat> and we're going to put payment amount 80 bucks and we hit the Save button. When you go to Pay Info, what you'll note, here's a check, here's a receipt of the check, and it's paid off this particular invoice. It's paying off invoice number 32. So what that allows you to do is actually track the status of payments to your invoice. All right, now that was, again, more than I wanted to do on payment. Cancel transfers escrow. Canceling and refunding, and again, when you're ready to, do, if you have to cancel and refund, the refund wizard is your friend. A great tool. <clears throat> you can pick your uh, who you're going to transfer, who you're going to get the refund to, how much you want to refund, and basically uh, move through the process. Now, note, if you have a group registration, you can't even see the refund wizard unless you ungroup the registration. And again, once a registration is paid off, we don't so much care about the grouping. Generally, what the grouping purpose is for is so you can keep a cluster of people together for whom they still owe money or about whom there is still an outstanding balance. <clears throat> All right. So um, let me go back and just run a live one through on the, on the refund wizard. And so I'm going to go back to refund wizard. Zabrowski here. So we're going to find Miss Zabrowski. So we go to her registration, she's paid up, and we go to payments, and we need to give her a refund. So we hit refund wizard. We're going to pay to her. Again, how much do you want to refund? The total amount, the current payment that we might be setting on here, total paid minus the fixed amount if you have to keep money back or refund a hard amount. I'm only going to refund five bucks or refund a percentage of the total. <clears throat> so again, current amount, how much you're going to refund, it automatically will cancel. Give it a re uh, reason for the refund, hit process, and we've got the refund rec uh, recorded, <clears throat> and then we have the original payment and the refund of this particular receipt. <clears throat> so that is part of the refund for a given uh, total amount. Uh, refunding to escrow, again, if we go to the registration and we want to refund to escrow, <clears throat> refund wizard, we're going to refund escrow, that will then allow you to, uh, we're going to refund half of this for some reason, 
and we're going to maybe we're not re, maybe we're not canceling the registration. Maybe this is a customer service deal. The student was unhappy with the class. We'll say, look, I'll I'll credit you five hundred dollars uh, for this class, and you could use it for another class. So we're going to do partial refund. I'll be able to say partial uh, refund to escrow. Yes, we do. So again, we've partial refund. We reduce this so that it shows this class is paid in full. And what that does, though, is give us a $500 credit that student can use out of escrow for a future class. All right, let's kind of move on to transferring payments, partial payments. Um, if you're on a registration and you have some leftover money and you need to move it around, you've got the ability to take a partial payment and move it to another registration, move it to another course, move it to uh, another the same person, uh, a different registration, a different person altogether, or put it into an escrow account. So um, <clears throat> now I'm going to go back and we'll do an example of that. Oh, here we go. All right, but let's find Mr. Dole. I think Bob, my friend here. So um, we're going to look at his registration. So right here on this class, Bob has an overpayment of $100. Um, we've got to figure out, well, what do we want to do with this? There's a negative balance due of $100, and we say, well, Bob, what do you want to do with your money? He says, well, I'd like to move $100 of this to my friend uh, Bill Clinton. So transfer a payment to escrow, transfer entire, transfer partial. We want to do a partial payment, and we want to take $100. So what basically we're doing is we're snipping off $100. And now we're going to go find a registration to move it to. Now. If you've been working with payment transfers, and pay attention UTA if you're around here, or Greenville, if you've got a large database, this is a brand new feature on the payment transfer. It allows you to scope how many days back you want to go to look at registrations to transfer the money to. So if I wanted to go to Clinton, Bill Clinton, and again, now you kind of need to know which class they owe the money on because that doesn't show you from this screen. You're going to transfer $100 from Bob Dole to Bill Clinton's class right here. We hit the OK button. And again, we've removed that money off of the check for Bob Dole, and it's going to show up somewhere in Bill Clinton's uh, credits for that particular class. So that is the transfer payment. Um, other options, again, apply payment from escrow, a refund overpayment. Um, when you have a case with a, with a refund, with an overpayment, the refund wizard allows you to just say refund the overpayment and not go through the reasons and everything because it's just an overpayment. The special option there. All right, back to mass refund. Don't forget, again, if you've got a case, Lord forbid, where you have to cancel a course and you might have a mass set of refunds, there is a tool under module course, cancel course, that lets you do a mass class level refund. Um, again, I'm not going to cover that right now. We can roll that tape back to it. I believe that is covered in the, in the help guide. So if you go to uh, the help guide, it gives you an opportunity to talk about it there. Payment errors. Uh, again, uh, we, we kind of did this once on that one billing record where we voided the billing record. Um, if there is an error in a payment and you need to keep track of the receipt, you can void it and then uh, to um, go back and then renew it. And so we get into the to be or not to be, uh, poor alas, poor Yorick kind of thing. Um, voiding or deleting. Generally, if you need a copy of the old payment, you have a receipt sequence number that you are worried about or that people pay attention to, and you need a record of that old payment information, you avoid it because it stays in the system. It doesn't get added or counted or, or in, in the income part. If you have a case where it really is a trash record, 
you started to enter something, there's zero payment amount, it's a billing, there's no invoice number assigned, it's just junk, I don't have a problem with deleting a record. And again, this really has to do with your policy system at your institution. Pay preferences, again, we, we talked about setting options up. There are some things that you can, the payment number, use deposit numbers in reporting, we'll talk about it in a bit, invoice number, a deposit screen, a billing screen, um, how you want the pay detail displayed, payment of the credit cards, um, user-defined payment types, etc. This is all part of your pay preference. All right. Payment reports and deposits, and we're running behind, guys. We're going to run a tad bit over the hour here. Two main deposit reports are what we call cash box and daily income by source by date. So cash box um, is the one that you can uh, kind of gives you a reporting panel. Uh, daily income by cash box, uh, and I don't have that whether or not my screen. I didn't didn't get that. Um, so what's the difference between them and what you might use? Cashbox has a couple of things. It can auto assign a deposit number. And again, if we're running out of time, so on the deposit number part, if you go to the Aceweb, Aceware help, this is the help guide, just type in deposit in the, in the search mode you can look at the idea of how you manage, to, oh no, this is ACE Web Deposits, this is Course Deposits. Let's put Deposit on Payments and search that. ACEWARE Cash Box Deposit Number. <clears throat> this is the Cash Box and it'll tell you about how to use the Deposit Number tool to be able to generate cash payments. And again, um, the advantage of that is that it allows you to run payments deposits at any time during the day, whereas if you run them out of normal by, uh, by date or by using the query option, you generally have to run the previous day because for AceWeb, you might be getting registrations past 5 o'clock on an end-of-day report. Um, options that you can split by the username. Um, options that you can remember the settings. You have a, a simple way to do the query. The disadvantage, it is not, does not give you every single query option that you can have with the daily income report. And Lori, I think you've got a poll that we're asking folks, what payment type do you use or method do you use to report your deposit? So I'll let you grab that. Ready? What method of deposit do you use? And I don't know where the use went on that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you use, uh, you, you, can, you use. Do, do you do that thing you do and, and we select all yeah. that apply? <laughs> right, right. So, all right, so you got that poll up here now? I do. All right, People are poll voting is away. open. This is good. We're about halfway yeah. through the group has had a chance to vote, so we're going to give it another. Oh, there it is. Poll. Oh, I see it now. I finally got cash box by user, daily income by Nate, the other. I'd be curious for those folks who are other, which kind of shocks me, 30% other. Uh, boys, uh, write a note in the text box to Lori what the other is, if you, if you wouldn't mind. I'm just real curious. That seems awfully high, so uh, <clears throat> uh, I, or I'm surprised by that. So tell me what you're using if you're not using cash box or daily income. All right, uh, wrapping things up. Um, one of the questions about payments a lot is what? Uh, show me all of the payments for a given individual. And there's a couple of ways to do that. When you're in a registration, and let me get to here we go where you're on the registration on a name or a registration, Alt and the F9 key will give you a quick thumbnail view of every payment on file for that particular student. Now, there also is a report. If you go to edit registration, any edit registration, go to print receipt and do additional reports, 
there should be a report in there that says payment history that you can run that will show you every payment in a little more detail that that student has made. So that is an option in there. And then finally, a last tool in the general reports is PayGrabber. Um, PayGrabber allows you to look up, at, again, typically your AW pending payments, or you can use it to just search information about a particular payment. And again, I used to always say that you know when we were uh, back at the university, we'd have a person come in saying, I sent you a check eight months ago for my daughter. Um, can you tell me the check number on that check? Well, what was the course? Well, I don't know. It was in the fall. OK, sir, what's your name? So basically, you could go in and say, payer name is Clinton. He was looking for Chelsea, that check he wrote for Chelsea. So we'll see. Here's all of the registrations that Clinton was the payer for. And it'll show you the student, the course it was, the pay type, the billing amount. And you can double click on the student and actually then drill down to the detail um, you know, on any of those individual payments. Uh, so again, um, that F7 key also lets you find um, you know, if, who entered the payment, you know, what user entered a payment, uh, when a payment was made. Uh, maybe there was a receipt number you're looking for. The transaction ID on ACEWEB, if you're trying to correlate back to your payments, Registra or payments that came in through your payment gateway. So again, that F7 key is a handy tool on that. And wrapping up, we're going to end up with a bang here. AW pending payments. If you are in ACEWEB and you have students that go to register and then walk away, they don't finish the process, you may have a registration that is paid it might be not paid because ACEWEB doesn't know back from the payment gateway if the credit card went through. Um, now, on the help guide, and this is the reference here, there is a pretty good review of the pending payment setups. And there is a place where you can show how you run reports to do that. Um, note, if you have ACEWEB and you see ACEWEB pending payments, you can de decide how you want payments handled that are coming in through the web or registrations handled when a payment, a student goes out to pay, and they don't come back to ACEWEB properly or to close it out. So again, you can leave it active, which is basically the student gets credit immediately, payment records are active, but it shows pending. That's probably not recommended. Uh, registration records are active, payment records are voided because we don't know if the payment's been made. Two or th two is probably the one that might be the most, uh, between one and two is probably where your setting would want to be. Uh, where you show the record is canceled, so you could track it, you could look it up, uh, but that there's no payment record on that. And then the final one here is you delete everything. In other words, you don't even want to worry about tracking down that. I would think that you'd want to do actually one or two so that you could identify these students and find out if there was a problem with the payment or the credit card, something happened, because you don't want to lose the registration. All right, we're at questions. We are running late. There's a lot of ground to cover. Um, we've got the next webinar coming up in a couple of weeks. Lori, how kind of questions we got here? We had a big, well, I, big I think we only have just a few. I've already answered them. I, I, really, we didn't have any good questions today. You did such a great job of going over oh. everything. I think we're all right. So since we're behind, I think we're going to let everybody go. We'll let everybody go. Again, do let us, those folks who are doing other for your deposits, uh, shoot a note to Lori as to what that is. Again, a reminder. Um, on the website that we've got um, under your customer pages, webinar archive. There is a good session on, again, invoicing and payments. And um, again, if there are pieces that you're not quite sure about, shoot a note to Lori or I, and we'll be happy to follow up with you on those. So thanks for hanging with us. A lot of ground covered. Have a good week, and um, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.